Why, hello there, and good talk to you all, and welcome to this month's episode of the Fripp and Frank in Show. I am your host, Dr. Weiser Fripp, and with me is my good creation, Frank Einstein. Hello. So, um, this month's episode, of course, is on... What is it on, Franken, my boy? It is on Anthology in Horror. Horror Anthology. So, where do we begin with this? Well, Franken, remember what we said in the rehearsals? Why don't you tell our listeners a bit about what Anthology is? Oh, well, uh, Anthology uh, is basically a thing that can be of any genre. It can be in comedy genres, it can be in drama, it can be in science fiction, but it also does very nice in horror. And we have a lot of horror shows and movies uh, out there in the horror world. I mean, um, we have, uh, like... The Stephen King horrors such as Creep Show, that's one of the ones you showed me, Master. And uh, we also have um, other anthologies like um, whatever is there, um, American Horror Story, which is a TV show. Um, and we also have, um, you know, um, we have Creep Show 2 which is uh, another anthology franchise. Oh, and we have Carry On Screaming too. Uh, is that in there, Master? <coughs> well, my boy... <coughs> <coughs> Don't excuse me, I, as I told you, I'm, I'm not 100%, but I'm still well enough to do this show. Um, yeah, Carry On Screaming, that is part of a, an anthology series, the Carry On series, but Carry On is comedy, but it has dabbled in different genres. When they dabbled into horror, they went with Carry On Screaming. And that is the only Carry On film with horror elements, even though it's a spoof film. Um, but yeah, like you put it, uh, there was the creep show films, uh, and also there is... Um, <coughs> There is uh, others, um, like Halloween. Now, thank you, my boy. Do you know Halloween 3? Oh, yeah, that one where it's nothing to do with Michael Myers. Yeah, well, uh, actually, John Carpenter actually saw potential in this film series to serve as an anthology. But, of course, when they went with a new theme... Uh, with anthology, with Halloween 3, even going as far as to abandon the whole slasher genre, they was going to make it an anthology series, but that did not take off. In fact, if that did take off, they would have, Halloween 4 would have definitely carried on from 3. Uh, like, they would make sequel, they would make like a two part anthology story. That was the plan with different horror stories, but. Nobody likes that. They all wanted Michael Myers back. But since then, uh, Halloween 3 has gained a cult following, but they've never really tried to do it again with an anthology series. Um, one thing they have made uh, an anthology series is like um, Freddy's Nightmare. Freddy's Nightmare. Oh, Freddy Krueger, you mean that TV show of a nightmare on Elm Street? Yeah, yeah but only in this... Uh, Robert England reprises his role uh, as Freddy Krueger and has a different nightmare to tell us every week. Uh, that was fun. Uh, there was also Friday the 13th series, which, again, had nothing to do with Jason Voorhees, but every episode was a different story. Oh yeah, Master, I was thinking, where the hell's Jason? And he was never there in it. As we've established already, my boy. It is an anthology series. Um, also, we cannot forget the Twilight Zone. I mean, that's, that is all science fiction. But it does have the horror elements. Like, as a young person, I found the theme tune for the, um, for the series, the, the Twilight Zone, quite unsettling, the music. And 
Not to forget that other ones that came out around the same time that had a 90s reboot that was better in the 90s, The Outer Limits. Oh yeah, The Outer Limits, I remember that one, Master, you showed it me. Um, also, The Outer Limits, it did look like a rip-off of The Twilight Zone. I think they've only rebooted it once in the 90s, didn't they, you said? Yeah, they did, but they've given The Twilight Zone many different reincarnations. Um, also, the film Creep Show, directed by Jose Romero. Oh yeah, Master! Was all those Stephen King stories that were put into one film? Yeah, they were. They were all a combination of short stories that Stephen King wrote that were made into films. He was even in one of them with the grass. You know that short with the grass? Oh yes, Master! And another one that you showed me on Netflix was Holidays. Oh yes, Holidays. Basically, they were short films which consisted with different themes of holidays. The first one, it opens with Valentine's, which is a, val a short Valentine's horror film. And then they go to St. Patrick's Day, which again is another short film with St. Patrick's, which is all horror. And then there's Easter, and then that's followed by Mother's Day, and then Father's Day, and then um, Halloween, and then Christmas, and then New Year. And there were a lot of people in those shorts, including um, in the Christmas one we had Seth Green, and in the New Year one we had Lorenzo Izzo, and uh, we also had um, the man from Lost doing a voiceover for the Father's Day short. Oh yeah, the man who was John Locke in the original Step Barber film. Y yes. Um, and a lot of those had good shorts. I like the Easter one. The Easter one was very dark and creepy and disturbing and I liked that. I liked it a lot. Yeah, I bet you did, my boy. Uh, so what else uh, in anthology um, do you like? Um, what about that one? The friend child-friendly ones? Oh, yes. Goosebumps and Are You Afraid of the Dark? Uh, now, Goosebumps start off as an anthology book series which you read to me some of them yeah i have read you some and i've been teaching you to read by using them too haven't i yeah great books written by rl stein he was also the co-creator and producer well executive producer for the tv show in the 90s and of course there was the other one as well are you afraid of the dark now if any of our listeners are kids from the 1990s I don't know what it was like because I'm not, I'm only a couple of years old. I mean, I was born grown up because I'm a creation, but, you know, apparently this was the horror anthology for the kids of the 1990s. Um, you know, children's horror. Oral Stein is known as the Stephen King of children's literature. Um, and the Goosebumps stories. Goosebumps, I feel, is a bigger franchise with... You know, merchandising and advertising and spin-offs and, you know, the TV series had some uh, episodes based on the books, but there were some episodes that were actually original and made for the TV show. Um, one of my favourites, of course, is like in the fifth season, when it's like all hosted by R.L. Stein and he tells us his favourite Goosebumps stories and then he puts them in there. Um... I like The Haunted Mask, The Werewolf of Fever Swamp. I also like Monster Blood. And I like Night of the Living Dummy. But in the TV show, they like skip straight to the Night of the Living Dummy 2. When I think the first one was a lot better from what you told me, Master, when you read it me. Yeah, yeah, I don't get why they did that with the TV show. But, uh, they did. They did. Uh, what else? Uh, Are You Afraid of the Dark? Now, Are You Afraid of the Dark consisted of it was first of all i think it was just a tv show and then it was like these group of kids that meet in the woods around a campfire to tell scary stories called the midnight society and every week every week they would tell a story called the tale of something uh, but of course i think the opening credits for that were very more memorable like you see a boat by a lake you see a swing swinging on its own you see a dummy, you see a fan, you see someone light a match and it says, are you afraid of the dark? I find that very more memorable. Uh, I also think some of the stories were more grittier, more riskier. 
because this was, I think, aimed more at older kids, like teenagers. Yeah, yeah, aimed at teenagers. Um, so, you know, um, one story which I do find notorious and I do think is a bit extreme for a, a 90s sort of young kid show. Uh, the episode of Are You Afraid That The Dark Calls The Tale Of The Dead Man Floats. I mean, who can forget that one? Oh, with the red skeleton in the swimming pool. That one, I think, was a bit graphic for a kids' anthology show. I mean, it was like the stuff of nightmares. Even I thought, did kids of the 90s think this was scary? Because it looks scary. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think it's a very controversial episode, that one. Um... You know, and uh, we even have a, a, a letter here uh, from Random Ross, uh, who wrote to us. Uh, Random Ross is the man on Random Horrors that will put this podcast uh, on his YouTube channel once we have done here. Uh, he's got he's wrote a few notes here. Uh, it says, uh, The Tale of the Dead Man Floats. I found it absolutely terrifying and petrifying as a child. And, um, you know... I mean, I'm completely desensitized to all of this now, but for a 90s show, I still think this was very extreme and very risky. I only ever remember seeing the episode air once on Nickelodeon in the 90s and never again, because I am assuming they gave a lot of the children the frights and parents complained. I don't know about that, but yeah, I, I can understand why, uh, Renz and Ross. Uh, so... Uh, Goosebumps and Are You Afraid of the Dark, which do you think is better in your opinion, Franken? Well, I like Goosebumps, and, you know, Goosebumps got made into a film with Jack Black as Aurel Stein. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. And then, then they did the sequel about last year, was it? Oh, yes. They're, they're, they're fun films, and I like that they made them more family-friendly and childish. Um, and... Yeah, I like that. Um, but I think when it came to more of the seriousness of it, it was Are You Afraid of the Dark? I mean, they're making a film about that, aren't they, Master? Yeah, they are. Uh, apparently, from what I've been heard, uh, they're still going to have the Midnight Society thing going on. They're going to have a new cast and kids around the campfire telling the story. Uh, but... The story that they're going to tell is going to be something original. It's not going to be a rehash or anything. It's not going to be like Goosebumps. Yeah. Do you think that could be the start of an anthology film series, maybe, Master? I don't know. It depends if it does well or not. Um, so, yeah. I think Are You Afraid of the, the Dark has more of the horror factor, more chills in it. Uh, but you see, this is something with these anthology shows. For kids' horror anthology, if you like, have read the Ghostbumps books or seen the show, no one ever really dies in the Ghostbumps series. Or are you afraid of the dark? If the story featured ghosts or zombies, etc., they died long before the story began and took place. Um, and also, they kind of focus on a lot of things that are very unlikely to happen in real life, too. Um, and, of course, these horror series were aimed at a younger audience. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I think anthology does a lot better in uh, television than it does in films. I mean, it can work in films, like if it's an anthology film. Now, for example, there's the anthology film Trick or Treat. Which is a good anthology film. Oh yeah, Master. Always ending with Sam somehow being involved. My favourite one is the werewolf one. I like the school bus one. Um, and there's others like... Um, uh, what's this? Is there? uh, there's a Christmas horror story. Christmas horror story, I think, is anthology. Would you say so? Yeah, but they all like link in together, don't they? Eventually, uh, they have some kind of connection, but it has a good twist as well. Um, that one, yeah, it does. It does. Um, so they take holiday themed horrors and they make Zab anthology. Uh, to our listeners out there, if there is any other anthology films that we are not mentioning which you think should be mentioned, 
do be sure to send them in to us, you know, because we would very much like to watch them. Especially me before I die, because, as you know, I'm not in the best of health at the moment. Um, but I'm stable. Uh, so, um, Flankhead, how about we get to the next part? Oh, yes, Master, I think I know what you're going to say what it is. American, American Horror Story! Yeah. So, American Horror Story, when I first watched that, I thought it was just going to be a series uh, in a murder house, but then we find out that the theme and the stories change every season. Like, season one we had the murder house, and season two they reused the cast and made the story asylum, this time not being in the present and being in the 70s, or was it the 60s? Then they did the coven which was in the present day, yeah, and then it was Freak Show, which was loosely inspired by the 1932 horror, by the way. Uh, I'm sure all our listeners know this. And then we had Hotel, which I thought was a bit piss. Oh yeah, Master, I, I tried to watch that one, and I did give it a try, but I just couldn't keep up with it. It was just... It just didn't feel the same without Jessica Lang, because she left after season four. But she did return in season eight for... A few episodes. Yeah, she did. Um, another one. Uh, after that, it was... Um, was it Cult? Yes, Cult. Then it was... Um, oh, no, hang on. No, Cult was season seven. Series six was Roanoke. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I did like that one. I liked the first half of it, how they made it look like a paranormal documentary reality show. And, but then it's like it got all um, a bit crazy towards the end, turning into a mockumentary to a reality show. Um, but it was a it was a decent season. Then we had Cult, which again was sort of realistic. I don't ever recall it having much supernatural elements in there. No, master, I don't think it did. But then we got season eight, which was Apocalypse, which was. So, cult and Apocalypse and Hotel were set in the present, and so was Roanoke. Um, and this next season, season nine, we're going back in time to 1984. Ah, oh, yeah, 1984, American Horror Story. Set in 1984, and they're going to give us the whole slasher element in there, the 1980s camp slasher, which I am looking forward to, which I do hope I get to see to the end. If not, I can just be a ghost and watch it to the end. Don't worry, Master. I'm sure you'll get through it. It's, um, I'm looking forward to this. The other thing is, this time they're not having Sarah Paulson or Evan Peters, which have been regulars in the show since season one, just like Jessica Lang was, but then she left after four seasons. I don't know what it'll be like, but we're still going to have Emma Roberts in there and some of the other cast from previous seasons. Have faith, my boy, have faith, I'm sure. You know, because the beauty of American Horror Story is every season is different. I mean, not all the seasons are good, but they're always different. They're always going for different approaches. They're always trying something new, which is what I like about that show, American Horror Story. It is just, you know, and if you don't, it's like you can watch it from, like, any season you want, and it will, I mean, yeah, it has been confirmed since that every season, the whole show is one big multiverse, that is for sure, but like I say, you can just start from any season you want, and work up, and, and work it all up from there, like, I started watching it from season four, and then I went back and watched season one, and two, and three, and then I showed it to you, and you just binge-watched it. You watched, like, one season a full night. Well, yeah, Master, because I don't sleep, do I? No, you don't. Um, so, yeah, we've had quite the discussion of American Horror Story. What else is there in Anthology? Um, there's Black Mirror. Oh, yeah, uh, Black Mirror's technology, when, like, always set in different parts. Like, it could be set in the past, well... There's only been one that's set in the past, like that Bandersnatch interactive film. But it always either takes place in the present or in the dystopian future. Now, 
we're coming off horror for a second here, but it is science fiction. But it does have those dark horror elements. It has those scary, disturbing moments in there. Yeah, I get what you are meaning, my boy. I get what you're saying. It does have those dark horror elements in there, which I think you're right. It does have unsettling moments. Um, is there anything else anthology horror related? Uh, oh, Master, I can almost forgot. Tales of the Crypt. Oh my goodness, how could we forget that one? Tales from the Crypt. I loved that show. I loved watching it live action. They even did an animated series in the 90s with the Crypt Keeper. The Crypt Keeper. Yeah, that was always, you know, he'd always open with the episode, then he'd always close it with the episode. He'd tell different stories. Yeah, that was a great show. Great show. Yeah, it was. Oh, and, you know, Horror Anthology, do you think it's inspired Random Ross with his YouTube channel? Because he does this anthology show. Well, he does a show where he tells short stories as this character called the Iron Phantom. Yeah, I would say it's a variety show where he tells short original stories from him, some loosely based and inspired by other works of fiction. But yeah, I sort of would count that as a, an anthology thing. Um, so yeah, how about we, we round up our favourite anthology movies and shows? Oh, Master, there's too many to rank up. I don't think I can do it from the top of my head. Well, let's just, let's just highlight some of the few mentions and, like, what we talked about today, like, um, The Twilight Zone, yeah? Um, Goosebumps, Are You Afraid of the Dark? Uh, The Outer Limits, Freddy's the 13th, Freddy's Nightmare, Cre uh, Tales from the Crypt. Oh, American Horror Story. Yeah, Halloween 3. Uh, yeah, I guess that we can count. Um, also, uh, Holidays, Trick or Treat, Ameri yeah, Chris A Christmas Horror Story. Yeah, um, American Horror Story. We just mentioned that. Yeah, like I said, there's loads of anthologies out there and it doesn't just have to fall in the genre of horror. It can also be different genres like comedy, drama, and science fiction. Yeah. Oh, okay, so um, is that all there is to say? I would say so, my boy. So, yeah, that is it for this month's episode of The Frip and Franken Show. I want to thank all of our listeners for listening. I have been your host, Dr. Weiser Frip. Oh, and I have been Frank N. Stein. Uh, this has been the Frip and Franken Show Horror Podcast. And I hope you've enjoyed this month's episode where we've spoken about anthology and horror. So, can I close it, Master? Well, yeah, you're pretty much doing all right so far. So, yeah, go on. Well, that's it for this month's episode of the Frip and Franken Show. Bye-bye. Yeah, like Franken puts it, I'll feed a say goodbye. I do not have nightmares. Nightmares. I don't know what one of those is. I know, boy. I know. <laughs>